How is everybody doing tonight? Uh, we are back for another season of Alone. Uh, this time it is season eight. We are at Chilco Lake in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, and I think we're gonna have a pretty interesting season. Um, first thing that, I, that caught my attention is the location. So Chilco Lake is not very far from uh, Vancouver. So this is probably the closest we've ever been to a major city. I mean, I guess the Vancouver Island seasons also are pretty comparative. Uh, but uh, another thing that I think is going to be interesting is the weather is not going to be nearly as harsh as the past two seasons up at Great Slave Lake. The temperatures won't go nearly as cold. And I think that if we get contestants who get set up very well, possibly take down some big game, uh, we could see uh, people surpassing that 100 day marker that we saw for the first time ever last season. Uh, five contestants got to show their stuff today. Um, we'll have, I assume, five more next week. But let's go through a one by one and we'll break down everything they went through tonight. So first off, we're going to start with Tim. Tim was our first tap out of the season. And, you know, I was kind of liking him at the start. But then once we start to like hear his story and his medical issues, I'm thinking to myself, why was this guy cast for the season? And, you know, he's got the he seems like he's got the skill. Looks seemed like he had the drive but to have a heart that is not fully functioning and knowing that being out in those harsh conditions are going to put major stress on your heart it's my opinion that he probably shouldn't have been cast this season and that spot probably could have gone to someone else um you know even when he was first on the screen before uh we saw him him do anything i just got that feeling that he was he was not going to go all the way and there he is i think six days in our first to tap out so tim lifelong outdoorsman big game hunter uh, said he had the most experience with bears and seeing how apparently the theme of the season is bears 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 bears, bears grizzly he seemed like he was going to have a good shot until he realized he's a few years or until he revealed he's a few years removed from a major heart attack and having a uh, compromised heart. Uh, you know, he started off with that shelter and he just flew through that thing, got himself set up, he had three, three nice walls, a uh, door of cut out doorway for himself topped it off with his tarp with uh, with just a light bone structure and by far the best shelter that we saw on week one but uh doesn't mean anything when uh you're you start showing signs of a heart attack and you have to top uh tap out you know when it's, the shelter side of things went very well for tim the hunting and gathering side did not you know when we see a contestant out there chucking rocks at birds as his way of of hunting i'm not sure if he had a bow he must not have had a bow uh, uh, i didn't double check the equipment list but you'd think that if he's out there hunting he would have taken a bow with him if he had taken one so you know rock versus bow uh, i don't think that rock wins most of the time you know we got out to him fishing and it seemed like he had a decent fishing plan and then he starts trying to cast his line in the water and that was a stress inducing moment because he's got this hook and he's chucking it into the wind and it looks like he's getting all tangled around his hand the hook and line is flying every which way it uh did not go well and i thought we were just waiting until we were going to watch him hook himself and possibly tap out with an injury uh, you know, we're on day three, day four, and the hunger starts to be a major issue for Tim. And that's when you know things not good. You know, I think two days later, he starts not feeling good. And all of a sudden, he thinks he might be ha having to tap out. Uh, the chest pains start, and he's pretty quick to buzz the 
for help and be our first contestant to tap out. So six days in, nine contestants remain. Um, it was interesting, you know, we don't, we don't have, it looks like we don't have the after show with Colby this year. Instead, we have Nikki from season six. Uh, I'm not sure if many of you uh, remember her. I believe that she was, uh, she, she was pulled for malnutrition. I might be wrong on that. And I believe another one of her highlights was getting bit by a squirrel. So this season she is both first responder and doing the exit interview. So it was kind of cool to see that as part of the actual episode and not a total after show. So I like that. Um, but I did also enjoy uh, Colby last year very, very much. So yeah, that's it for Tim. Let's jump into our other contestants. First up, Bicko. I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. I don't think we actually heard his name, just saw it on the screen. Uh, so I apologize if I have pronounced your name incorrectly. You know, obviously a very unique character. Uh, in my opinion, very likable and somebody I will absolutely be rooting for uh, through this season. You know, we open, what are his passions? Music and wilderness. So we get shots of him singing out in the, out in the wild, you know, that ridiculous uh, nose ring that he made for himself out of a shaved piece of bone, forging the knife. Uh, I, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of what he had started there for a shelter. Seemed like he had some, some major spacing in his log. So hope he gets that sorted out before long. But uh, first impressions, very entertaining and very much going to be rooting for Bicko moving forward. Uh, next up we have Matt. Matt is probably has the harshest climate change out of anyone this season. He lives in the Virgin Islands, so jumping from the Virgin Islands to the mountains in BC is a fairly harsh weather shift, and we'll see if that's going to be a factor. You know, Matt, he got dropped off at his location and turns around, immediately spots a moose out in the water uh, just to kind of show us all that there is a big game around. Um, <clears throat> so Matt, he teaches and generally lives by primitive skills. You know, his little montage there showed, seemed to show that he's got quite a bit of talent and uh, I'm honestly looking forward to whatever he ends up building for himself for a shelter and whatever else he is going to be able to craft while he's on alone. One interesting thing is Matt did not bring a ferrule rod. Uh, I believe there was two contestants from the item list uh, that did not bring them, but he seems pretty capable of making a fire. You know, I was immediately gonna say, oh, you don't bring your ferro rod, you're gonna be pretty quick to be sent home, but he seemed pretty uh, capable at getting that fire started. And um, that is gonna be a huge advantage for him. Uh, basically being able to take an extra item by not being reliant on the ferro rod. Um, Matt seems like he's going to be a pretty interesting character. He named his cameras. I believe it was Chad and Jorge. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but it could be interesting moving forward. And also the first to spot a bear this season. Uh, next up, let's jump over to Clay. Clay had a very good start food-wise, you know, immediately gets a monster haul of mushrooms that should be able to sustain him for a little while in this competition. Uh, Clay is a bow hunter. He uh, does a lot of print primitive hunting, bow making, and uh, said he makes videos. So I'll have to do a little bit of research after the show to see if I can find exactly what Clay is up to on the internet. Shortly after getting his monster mushroom haul, Clay takes down a grouse and he seemed like he was extremely uh, confident with his bow. You saw him draw and, and fire that bow in what looked like about a second. Uh, I was very impressed by that. And it looks like bow skills uh, that he boasted about pre-alone uh, pre 
are going to be a huge asset for him this season. Uh, next up, he also built a rod and reel and it almost looked like it was very, very functional. Um, it's got to be the best rod, fishing rod we've ever seen on a loan. You know, he was casting with ease, reeling in, uh, looked like he had himself a very, very nice setup, setup there. Also, the first to catch a fish this season. So that's uh, uh, the haul of mushrooms, the grouse and fish. Food-wise, Clay is definitely way ahead of all of his competition at this point. All right, lastly, we have Rose. She's a self-taught hunter fisher and now owns a hunting store where she teaches others the skills that she's picked up throughout her life. Uh, looks like she's going to be building a little A-frame shelter. Um, you know, had some had some shelter issues to start. Was basically sleeping under her tarp near the water. And uh, as we as we got a couple days in, she decided to pack up all her gear and move inland to her new A-frame. Um, you know, we did also see her munching on some. Uh, mystery berries, uh, you know, not totally mystery berries, but some strange berries. And soon after she was uh, there vomiting, getting sick at night, you know, and that is never good. But right away when that started, I, could, I got the feeling that she was, she was really a trooper and really looking to push through that moment. Uh, so many other times we've people seen people get sick and just not being able to get over that, not being able to recover and it forcing them to tap out. But so far, not an issue for Rose um, and she ends up not being our first to tap out and will continue on. So that wraps things up for week one. We did not get to see Nate, Michelle, Coulter, Teresa, or Jordan. Uh, same as last season where things got split up and we only got to see four or five contestants each episode. I assume that's how it's going to go again. And honestly, I prefer that because we get to see a lot more of each of them on each episode. And instead of getting a little you know, rambled, smashed together montage of everybody on their on their first few days. I'd much rather get a deeper look at what each and every one is doing. All right, so that's going to wrap things up for me for week one. Very much looking forward to season eight of Alone. Really hoping we can see someone surpass that 100 days. And I think that this is a very good location for it. Um, that is going to wrap things up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.